In this video, let's take a look at some of the basic customizations that we can make with the overlay that we have displayed whilst driving or whilst streaming. Hopefully you've already gone through either the iRacing Live HUD or iRacing Live Streamer user manual or YouTube the setup video and you've got yourself to the same point where I am here. We've got our default overlay displayed. So on the top left hand corner you can see we have our timing tower. On the bottom left we've got driver details. On the bottom right we have our battle box and then our track map and in the top right hand corner is our overlay. So all of these items and many others that you can bring up on display as well can be resized, repositioned and even recolored. If we look at the iRacing live timing app and go into the settings menu, so we'll press F3 or click on the burger menu at the top here. I need to look for the section called overlay and then style overrides. I click into this field and then click on the three dots. We can see now that this has opened our style overrides window. Let's drag this to our main screen so that we can see what we're going to be adjusting. Now, if you're not used to looking at code, this might look a bit daunting to start with. But once we've gone through the video and you've had a little bit of a look around yourself, hopefully you'll see that it's quite simple to make these basic adjustments we're going to be looking at now. So first thing, perhaps you want to change the logo that you have displayed in your overlay. Well, to do that, we just need to replace the default URL here with your own one. So you'll need to have a direct link to a image. I've got one I've prepared earlier, so I paste that in. Make sure I keep the brackets on each end and I can then immediately see the effects either by clicking on apply or by pressing F5. And now we can see that the logo we have displayed has changed. Maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger though. So if I adjust the width value here currently at 428 pixels, let's try that at 628. See what that looks like. I'll press F5 to preview and now it's that bit bigger. But maybe I don't want it in the top right hand corner. Let's try and position it down next to the battle box. If I look at the next section of code here, we can see a description telling us that we can use these values to reposition the logo. I know that the screen I'm currently using is a 1440 screen, so I'm going to need to try and use that sort of value to bring it down. So here's how far away from the top we are, 10 pixels currently. Let's have a look and see what it, whereabouts is going to position if we go to 1200 pixels. F5 to preview, and we can see now it's roughly down where we want obscured by the battle box so we need to increase the value of pixels here to the right so let's change that from 10 maybe to 500 and see where that sits okay there we go that's not too bad now so that's roughly where we want let's bring it down a touch further so 1250 pixels from the top there we go 1250 and now it's sitting nicely next to the battle box so that's our logo repositioned and resized. You can also change the logos that are displayed within the race info grid results and championship components if you use any of those. Again, exactly the same, you just replace the URL that's inside those brackets. If I scroll down now on the style overrides window, we're going to see many other groupings of code relating to different components that we've got available. They're all going to be labeled here with the comments, so hopefully you'll be able to find the component that you're looking for. Uh, we're going to look at changing now maybe the track map. So perhaps we want to move this track map over to the left underneath the timing tower. Well, again, same sort of idea. We have a right value and a top value. So let's experiment with what that right value needs to be. Let's increase that from 10 pixels to the right to maybe 1500. See how far that gets us. Okay, it's got us a decent way across. Let's try 1900 on this one. Still not quite enough. We'll bring that up to 2200. And it's a bit too much. So 2100 and we're almost there. So we'll go for 2050 now. And that should have us sorted for the positioning, the horizontal positioning. But we need to bring it down. So again, we have a top value. Let's increase that to, what, 600? There we go, almost there. Another 100, I think. And then that'll do us very nicely with a minute. So now our trap map is sat underneath the timing tower. Now to resize most of the other components that we're looking at, we don't use a width or a height value to do that. We're going to use this translate Z value. So we can see that currently the trap map is set at translate Z minus 150 pixels. So let's see what that does. If we increase the value of that, so let's remove the negative value maybe so that it's higher. Press F5 
we can see now that that trap map is much bigger. Let's put that negative value back in and make it smaller again. So maybe minus 350. Again, if I preview that, now the trap map is smaller again. So that's how we're going to be using these right top and transform lines to adjust the position and then adjust the size of, say, the vast majority of the components that you're going to be looking at. If you can't find the section of code in here relating to a particular component that you want to adjust, then go on to the SDK Gaming website, navigate to support and then overlay component list. We've got pre-race components, race and post-race. So we're going to race components and perhaps it's driver inputs that I'm looking to reposition or resize, whatever it might be. Well, here then is our example code that we can paste straight into our style overrides window. So if I just copy that, go back to our style overrides window, scroll down to the very bottom, make sure we have a little bit of space here, paste that in, and now we can adjust those same properties to get driver inputs where I'd like. So you can use that method to yeah, reposition and resize any component that you want. What we can also do quite easily is change the colors. If we go back to the SDK Gaming website again, we're going to need to grab another piece of code to adjust these colors. If I scroll down to editing CSS styles, and then I'll scroll down a couple of pages and we can see we have a section called colors. I'm going to take this example code that we've pasted in here and put that back into our style overrides window again. And again, best to put it at the bottom to make sure we don't interfere with any other code. And we can see just from the few lines of coding, we're going to be able to affect many different components with the background of driver names, the selected driver icon, the driver position icon, the text color. And you can enter the values either with RGB or with a hex code or with a web color name. So if we just quickly make a couple of changes to show you what sort of thing I mean. Uh, the selected driver icon, that's the green one here. Let's make that white. So it'll be hex code is six Fs, press F5. And now that position is changed to white. And now of course I can't read the number that's inside there. So if we make driver position text color black, press F5. And now we can see that we've changed the color of the driver position text as well. So you can use these few lines of code to affect many different components on the overlay. You can see those changes I've made there have affected the timing tower, the driver details, and the battle box. Now that you know how to adjust the position, the size, and even the colors of many of the components, you're going to be able to get your overlay looking exactly how you would like. This is still only scratching the surface of what's possible with our overlay system. Because this style overrides has been exposed to you, you can do anything that you want to the CSS code to create any overlay and any display. So if we go back to the web browser for a moment, uh, I'll put this link in the YouTube video description, but this is all of the CSS code that is generating your overlay. And so you can make any adjustments that you want pasted into the style overrides window. So for instance, if I control F and search for track dash map, because I saw that in the style overrides window, that's what the track map component was called. I can see I've got all of this different code available to me to experiment and make any changes that I want. We know working with CSS code can feel a bit daunting to start with, so make sure you jump into our Discord support channel and we can ensure that you can get exactly the layout that you're looking for.